Mel Morris, a fairly old hand at the stock car game, but uh, he's been away from the tracks just recently. Nothing in the way of a point score in the 1986 season. We'll see how he gets on as the green flag goes on and they go into the first turn. Plenty of shale flying around as the cars jostle for position into that bend. That is the time when uh, accidents can happen and with these very, very difficult to control machines, that is very often the case. Morris leading Vic Jordan as they go through that turn. A gaggle of blue top cars there, including the big fin of number 247, Andy Webb. 107, Peter Bashford, 36 in there. That's Rod Falding. Red top stars already starting to make progress through the field. There's number one, Stuart Smith, with his gold roof still at the back of the pack, looking for an opportunity to break through the reds. He doesn't want to go too early because this is not the time to go getting too stuck in when the traffic is still pretty thick on the ground. Number one, there he is, Stuart Smith, getting beautifully sideways around that corner alongside Danny Clark in 205. Dave Tapping, who won his first final recently at Long Eaton in 412. 36, Rod Falding, one of several Steel Town flyers from that neck of the woods, alongside 107, the London car dealer, Peter Bashford. When I say London, his, uh, his premises for business are in the east end of London. He lives at Brentwood in Essex. The staff are already indicating to the drivers their relative positions in this race. Good opening heat here at Coventry. The rest of the Formula One stock cars. 5-1-1, I think he's a newcomer to Screen Sport. Screen, Peter Hall, Skipton in West Yorkshire. Don't often see him travel down to the Midland tracks where we see a lot of Formula One racing. There is Pete Hall, 5-1-1, going a little bit wide as Dan Clark gets onto the inside. Back at the front is still Mel Morris in the lead with that 4-4-4 car. Andy Webb moves up into third place, Rod Falding now running in fourth in 36. There is Rod Falding, the CF Boo car, smartly prepared as ever. These machines, of course, mainly powered by the big big block American V8 engines, usually the Chevrolet is the favourite model, the 454 cubic inch uh, piece of machinery that propels, or propelled I should say, American passenger cars in the 70s, the big block V8 now all but dying out in the States, there's still a lot of them going to the grounds on the oval surface, particularly in this country. Halfway mark, the Union Jack is out and uh, the field settling down. Stuart Smith coming through the field nicely in the Transflash Chevrolet. He's alongside Bashford and pulls ahead on the back straight. Smith moving up to challenge Rod Falding. Falding tucking in nicely on the inside with those slower cars in front of him. There's the leader, Mel Morris, 4.44. And uh, taking a quick trip with some tyres across the centre green. I think, uh, in fact, Steve Ferris there, 225, used to be an autograph racer, so perhaps he finds his more natural territory on the infield. There is the battle between Falding, 36, and Smith, number one. He used to say on Stuart Smith's car, I'm number one, why try harder? And uh, nobody much would argue with that, certainly during the 70s, an unprecedented run of motorsport successes for this man from Rochdale in Lancashire. There he goes, putting the pressure on Falding, not actually sticking the bumper in yet, but Rod Falding, he's a seasoned campaigner on the Brisker tracks. He won't move over, he can help it. Smith puts the bumper in, Falding slides wide. This time he has to let Stu go through, or does he? A tire on the uh, inside line there catches Smith as he tries to make his move. Falding tucks in behind and he gets the inside. Fabulous stuff. This is exactly the sort of thing that the Brisker fans love so well. Smith then just in front. At one time, uh, Smith had almost as many anti-fans as he did active supporters. Uh, these days, he still draws a lot of crowd response. He races more or less these days, uh, more as a hobby and less at, at one time as a business. And plus, a few recurring back problems have kept Stuart Smith away from the tracks quite a lot in recent seasons. There is Mel Morris, that's a very nice looking white top car, now with Andy Webb in 247, the Formula, uh, former Formula 2 stock car star of the 1960s, in fact, when he started his racing. 328 uh, leaning a little there, that's partly the banked turn of the Brandon track, and also it seems the suspension on the 328 car a little bit down, that was Keith Riley. 
99, uh, Les Mitchell getting moved over there. And Mel Morris gets the big one from 247, Andy Webb. Bad luck there for Morris. Webb takes the chequered flag and right on the last turn. Superb finish, and that looked very much as though uh, 499, Les Mitchell was back in front of second. We'll confirm in just a moment. While we're waiting for the result, let's take a look again at that classic finish to Heat 1 here at Coventry. Mel Morris, the white top driver, leads all the way to the last bend and then taken out in fine style by that blue grader, 247 Andy Webb. And we can give you the full official result now of Heat 1. First, 247 Andy Webb, a local man from Daventry. In second place, 499 Les Mitchell from Cleveland. Third was number one, the multiple world champion Stuart Smith from Lancashire. We're into heat two now and another 16 laps of the Brandon Bowl. Once again, the first eight cars will qualify for tonight's final. Let's take a look at the lineup. And right there in view, 309, the only active lady driver in Formula One stock car racing, Stockport's Jane Bean, a former stock saloon driver. Jane has quickly established herself as one of the characters and a woman to be reckoned with on the brisker Formula One circuits. A full lineup of cars again. Once again, the starter gets them in underway. That looks like uh, 110 there. Ray Scriven, an old campaigner from Gloucestershire, alongside another longtime driver, 327, Howard Davis. 33 is another Falding, another Rotherham lad, and in this case, Peter Falding, going very nicely during 1986 in that very smart looking car with the usual outstanding roof aerofoil wing. Completing halfway in their rolling lap, these V8 engines starting to get warmed up, ready for doing battle. 381, white top in this one, the only white top, in fact, Ian Hall from Billericay in Essex. Not too many southern drivers at present in Formula One stock car racing, and Ian making a fairly rare appearance on the track, I think, and here at Brandon, he's going to have his work cut out with a very big star field behind him. A neat little car, though, 381. Ready for the off with the green flag, hidden behind the yellow as ever. A dry night here at Coventry, though uh, again temperatures not exactly what you might expect for late spring. There's the green flag, the cars get underway for heat two. 21 cars and a lot of horsepower. As you can see, somebody already taking a trip across the infield there. Bounced right out of the way, there's no quarter asked or given as they go into the first turn. Open wheeled racing at its best once again with the mighty brisker Formula One stock cars, leaving a little bit of dust behind them as they go. 113, Russell Humphrey, a fairly recent addition to the star grade and brisker racing in Formula One. But uh, number two, the man behind him has been in the red for, I don't know how many years. Willie Harrison, a veteran campaigner from the 50s, suffered a mild heart attack last year, but nice to see him back in racing. One of those infield tyres being moved out onto the racing line. That could cause problems for somebody very shortly. Down the straight comes the leader. And off onto the infield goes Peter Balding, taking the tyre with him. He's quickly back in the race. Bangs that gearbox back into second gear. Away he goes. Most of the racing, of course, done in just one gear around these oval tracks with the enormous amount of torque and horsepower available from the V8 engines. 162, Robbie Craig coming under pressure from Willie Harrison in number two. Richard Pratt, 162, correcting myself as we go. Willie Harrison moves him over. Just in front, 228, that's Fred Skinner from Bromsgrove, another fairly local man. Right in there amongst the red top challengers, 110, Ray Scriven. Still the field sorting themselves out. Fred Skinner gets pushed wide this time. Harrison really getting the bit between his teeth. There's 110, Scriven goes into the fence, quite hard on that turn. Let's see if he can back out from the wires. I don't think he's going to. Harrison magnificently in control around that bend. Really is an old master at these shale tracks. Of course, the shale surface is far the most suitable, most fans will agree, for Formula One stock car racing. Into the fence goes Russell Humphrey. Mo Smith, the man who takes him there and joins him. Another traveller from the south of England, Mo Smith, 51 from Avely in Essex, just down by the Dartford Tunnel. Russell Humphrey backing off the fence. He's from Preston in Lancashire. 
the yellow top leader though he goes on his way and that's three four seven three four seven in fact the third time only out for that car is andy shaw from chesterfield derbyshire third out into that machine it looks as though it's nicely set up he's going very well drifting around that turn down the back straight quite a few hacking the grandstands on the far side uh, this evening at Coventry, 4.59 coming under pressure from 3.17, Nigel Hardy, Hardy in turn coming under pressure, they're all being pushed by by Mick Noden in 3.06, and Noden dumps them all and goes by on the inside, nice stock car racing there. There's Noden, he in turn is coming under pressure, and once again it's that man Harrison in there dishing it out, 1.39, that's uh, Stuart Smith, I think, the other Stuart Smith from Chesterfield. Nigel Hardy, he's off onto the infield this time. Uh, don't know whether he's going to retire completely from the race, but it's halfway, so he's got to get moving again if he's going to have any effect on the result this time. Still the, the leader then, uh, 3.47, Andy Shaw. There is Shaw now, going sideways into that turn. He's caught up with quite a few of the red-grey drivers. Uh, Where's that? No, I think that's Russell Humphrey, in fact, who played a, a trip to the wires earlier on, so he's got an awful lot of ground to make up. Shaw looking well under control as he goes around the bend. Mick Noden should be up there in second place. Let's see if we can find him. He's almost a length of a straight behind, so the yellow top driver going very nicely at the moment. 347, Andy Shaw just looking down the grading list sees him some way down in fact at the moment but uh, with that new car I think he'll be climbing the grades very shortly second and third at Long Eaton recently there goes Noden in 306 he's got a lot of work to do there's Mick Noden his very very distinctive shaped cars they're always a little bit square and boxy at the rear and the Mercedes radiator grill on the front it's nice to see somebody take the trouble to put a grill on the front of these cars uh, that used to be all sorts of shapes and sizes adorning them Formula One stock cars real purpose-built oval track racers unlimited power you can see the flame spitting out of the exhaust of that Russell Humphrey car as he moves over to let or does he know he He's planted on the racing line. He'll have to go if Mick Noden's chasing the leader. Humphrey a lap down. There's Andy Shaw coming to the closing stages now. He's got it pretty well under control at the moment. He's keeping a wary eye, no doubt, in his mirror and over his shoulder for Mick Noden. Of course, the sort of sideways that these boys get on the turns. He can look over his shoulder and see where that second place man is. And he's looking pretty, threat pretty threatening right now. There's a bit of back marker traffic in between. It's the last lap and Andy Shaw comes up to that bend. 162, just in front of him, Richard Pratt. And the chequered flag for Andy Shaw. No problems for him. Mick Noden unable to get up there and get in touch with the bumper. Tonight's meeting, of course, sponsored by Tire Services of Great Britain, and it's a World Championship qualifying round. run over the first three then in heat two up while we see one unfortunate driver yellow top perched on that big tire on the far side and uh, that'll take a little bit of moving by the coventry recovery crew the official result though a win for three four seven andy shaw from chesterfield second 306 from rugby mcnoden and in third place the old campaigner himself number two willie harrison heat three now and once again 21 cars and 16 laps of this ultra fast coventry track 422 is a young man who's had a very, very successful stock car racing career of late. Nigel Warden from Litchfield and Staffordshire. It wasn't so very many years ago when he was one of the youngsters peddling the mini stocks around the tracks. He went straight into Formula One and straight to the top. Again, one novice in this race, one white top driver out at the front, 295, a rather well-worn car of Paul Allen from Melton Mowbray. Looks a pretty aggressive piece of machinery, that one. Rather long in the tooth, I should think. Let's see how it goes on the track as the green flag goes down. A lot of blue smoke from that car, and uh, not too far behind, some pretty hot competition for the yellow top, too. Also in the lineup, 199, Mike Close, and being dropped right on the first bend. 128, John Wright gets spun out and backs across the track oh so slowly. Fortunately, all the traffic gone. That car for sale, so it still lives to be sold. As you can see, uh, John Wright has no intention of missing his number. He's got it written on just about every available panel on the car. The sun's shining here at Brandon tonight. Rob Cowley, 73, gets moved over by those red tops. 
and uh, you can see amongst them Finnegan and 199 close the farmer from Starbottom swinging the tail around that looked very much like Nigel Wharton a very aggressive young driver he gives no quarter at all he'll be trying to get through the pack and get up front he's been winning quite a few races this year through that turn with Rob Cowley stuck on the outside. Frank Wayneman, the current national points leader, 2-1-2, waiting his time at the back. Not making a very fast start this time. Had a man responsible for building an awful lot of cars in stock car racing as well as driving them. But up front, that rather unlikely looking car of Paul Allen still leads from the C grade. Fourth, fifth and sixth places go through. So back in about eighth place now, it's Mike Close leading the Red Sox. Somebody out of the race that looks like 378 on the infield Wayne Handley out of the race then 378 close still with Wharton for company coming through the grades 212 Wayneman clouts the tyre on the inside of the track 53 John Lund now he's the man who's trying to knock Frankie Wayman off the top 336 now hanging off the wires Pat Nortcliffe he's been having an eventful 1986 too and it looks like he is well and truly stuck in the wires He's okay though, bit of an indication there, everybody checking, or the marshal checking that he's all right. Knocking the tires asunder there, a car thunders down the inside of the circuit, past the starter, a little bit of dust blowing about now. It's uh, getting a question of visibility for these lads. 260, a man who does not have one of those big wings on top, but there's a tire rolling across the track oh so slowly. Everybody misses it so far. Certainly uh, the tires that line the infield as far as drivers are concerned, are probably better than the old-fashioned barrels that used to be there, which used to cause car. Oh, they're still there, in fact, at Coventry. And uh, anybody hits one of those is guaranteed a good trip through the air. We're at the halfway mark already. Racing going through very quickly. The race time for heat two was five minutes and five seconds. Let's see. This one looks even faster. We'll see if it is. We're looking for the leader. There he is, getting a tough challenge on his hands now. 244 in second place, the yellow top car. 244 Mike Rogers, in fact, and he gets onto the inside as Paul Allen moves over. Running in third. Um, back in fourth and fifth place now. It's close, getting the treatment from Nigel Wharton. Wharton putting the bumper into good effect. There's Bert Finnegan in there. Back in eighth place, John Lund, 53. Cowley still fighting back in that uh, rather small blue top car. We're back with Finnegan, another Staffordshire driver. Son of uh, equally famous father, Charlie Finnegan, a race of the 50s and 60s. A well-known character around the tracks. Used to carry all his money around in a belt around his waist. Always uh, used to do his deals for cash, they reckon. And a little bit of action on that bend as Graham Blundell gets knocked aside. Nigel Wharton putting the bumper in. Again, a racing son of racing father, Brian Wharton, haulage contractor from Litchfield. Nigel Wharton, the uh, racing son of the family. 74 now getting, getting the front bumper from Wharton, and he gets spun right out of the way. That's Neil Corney from Desford. So it's Nigel Wharton working his way through the pack with Bert Finnegan from very close company. That's a 295 driver, Paul Allen, wisely moves out of the way and then promptly gives the Reds a run down the straight. Graham Blundell up there in 156, still in the placings, but it's 422. Wharton now starting to put the pressure on 244, the current leader, Mike Rogers. Mike Rogers from Beardley in Worcestershire and he is again coming under pressure, or rather coming under pressure from the man who's been dishing it out during this race, Nigel Wart. Of course, Nigel knows he dare not back off because Bert Finnegan will pounce if he does. They're into the closing stages. There's John Lund, still seeking the points. It'll take him perhaps to the top of the Brisker Formula One charts. Jimmy Smith getting a little bit of a bounce. The front damper's not looking too good on that car as they go down the straight. The checkered flag falls, and that's a fine win and earned the hard way too by Nigel Wharton. Wharton, in fact, the current track championship leader at Coventry, with a total of 78 points over his nearest rival, which once again is Frankie Wayneman. So Frankie having to take second place to this young charger at Brandon this season. Wharton, an acknowledged track uh, expert here on the shale, 
He likes shower racing. He very rarely ventures onto the tarmac tracks at all. Managed to get a dead heat with Frank Wayman recently at Crewe. And uh, leading that track championship, it'll be interesting to see how it develops over the months at Brandon. The results then of heat number three. First three then, these cars go through to the final. 4-2-2, Nigel Wharton the winner. Second place, 55, Bert Finnegan. Third, after a good drive, 2-4-4, Mike Rogers. Thirty-three cars line up for tonight's consolation, including amongst them some very notab notable star names. Thirty-three who had a very wobbly trip in his heat, Peter Falding, and he'll be looking to win this one and get his place in tonight's world qualifying final. Also amongst the Reds, 128, John Wright, he had a pretty eventful trip too. 113, that uh, newly appointed uh, red top car, Russell Humphrey from Preston. 199, the Yorkshire farmer, Mike Close, driving the Brown Group sponsored car as ever, and 260, the gentleman who always has an immaculately turned out car, Dave Beresford. 107, our southern basher, Peter Bashford. 328 alongside, Keith Riley. That car has a definite tilt on it, support. 304, the big man from Ashbourne in Derbyshire, Dave Meller, haulage contractor from the Peak District, long serving. Formula One stock car driver, and uh, you'd no mistaking Dave when you meet him in the pits. Definitely one of the characters of the sport. You can see quite a lot of Reds did not qualify through the heat, so this is their chance, the consolation. They've got to make this one count and get up there for those valuable world qualifying points. Also amongst the uh, higher graded cars, 395, Mike Shirley there will definitely be on the white tops in this one as the big boys charge through the pack getting awfully out of shape and bouncing into the fence and they're bouncing over the tires and going in every direction you can think of bashford in there in 107 309 jane bean getting bundled over the infield mel morris he's there in 444 of course we saw him spun out of the lead in heat one bad luck for him he's got his second chance now to qualify he's got to make it count 309 Jane Bean going down the back straight. There's our leader though, 332 Vic Jordan. I'm not sure, it looks very much like an old Mark Jones car, that one. I can't be certain, but uh, obviously Vic Jordan taking it fairly easy. And look at the lead he's got. He's done very well. He escaped all the bother at the first bend as somebody gets bummed. Oh dear me, lots of cars going in very hard at the far end of the track typical open wheel stock car pile up that one there's six of them all involved all trying to back off and get back into the racing without of course becoming involved with the traffic coming from behind rob scriven in 117 nips through as does mel morris the whole pack manages to miss them this time rod folding starting to to put the hammer down in car 33 and 199 mike close also putting the pressure on 490 from the blue grade 110 Ray Scriven after a trip up the fence in his heat. He's up there in the placings this time at the moment. The curb on the inside uh, certainly takes some of these cars for a walk. There's Mo Smith in 51 going down the straight past the starter. Rob Cowley still in there in 73. 511, that uh, rather distinctive red, white, and green car just behind the leader, Vic Jordan, 332. 32 coming under a bit of pressure now he's amongst the back marks there's dave meller mixed up with mike shirley both stuck in the safety fence there narrowing the track somewhat that'll make overtaking nice and difficult most of the cars make it at the moment as shirley tries to back off and they're still stuck together there dave meller's car attached to the 395 machine looks like rob cowley going plowing on the infield this time a rather unusual profession of the hairdresser that's not often you find many hairdressers in the formula one scene mostly haulage contractors garage proprietors and the like rob a very enthusiastic driver around these parts 107 peter bashford going down the straight 
hasn't won a final, or hasn't won many finals, uh, shall we say, in recent years, but he still managed to stay up there in the blues, despite having to travel enormous distances for his racing. Jimmy Smith in 82 from Oxfordshire, coming along nicely with a yellow grade this year, 74, Neil Pecorny from the blues, and still the leader, Vic Jordan, 332. 162, Richard Pratt just behind him. Not sure if he's a lap down or not, though. And, uh, oh dear, Kelly's in trouble again with 511, Pete Hall. Peter Hall, one of those very determined Northeasterners uh, who definitely don't move over nicely when asked, and uh, he's coming back to make an attack. You can see the difference in the size between those two cars. 73, a fairly neat model compared to the rather bulky 511 machine. 82, it looks as though uh, 82, Jimmy Smith has taken Peter Bashford for a trip into the post, so he may well live to regret that later on. Still the green light all the way around the track. There's Mike Close now engaged in battle with Rob Scriven. Scriven uh, fairly subdued tonight. Belting him out of the way, 33 holding. He's going through now and in hot pursuit of the leaders. Now this is the man to watch, I think. That car is really a fine machine and well dialed into 1986 style Brisker racing and Pete Paulding unlucky not to qualify for his heat I think there's the leader you can see the gap is now narrowing rather well as they come to the halfway mark there goes Paulding now and close just behind him so under half a lap lead now for the white top leader of the race waiting for him to come round again that's Vic Jordan from Stratford on Avon there he is, there goes Jordan now, the white and blue car. Right from the heart of Autograss country down there in Stratford-on-Avon. Not a million miles away, of course, from Coventry, so a fairly short trip to the track for Vic Jordan. Round the bend, taking it fairly carefully with Rob Cowley in 73, just behind him. There's Peter Paulding. Mike Close just behind. They have to weave around that stationary 152 car. Close can't really take advantage of all the power down the straight. So, the red top's now definitely closing in on the early leaders. I think uh, Vic... Vic Jordan there, and in fact getting the treatment on that bend. You often see that, a white top driver leads most of the way, and then all of a sudden in the closing stages, he's pounced upon by the Reds. It's now Peter Paulding who leads. Second place is uh, Mike Close. Some way back to the third place man. Close has now got to put the pressure on if he's going to win, but I think Paulding actually pulling away from us. Jimmy Smith gets back into the race. Peter Paulding then from Rotherham in Yorkshire. Close, also from Yorkshire. With the Northerners well to the fore in this race. Red Tops making up for earlier disappointments by filling most of the, uh, the places down to sixth. So we've got Nigel Hardy back there in, uh, in third at the moment. Can't quite see him on screen, but 199 might close in second place and still making sure that the leader doesn't get it all his own way. Pete Bashford still parked in the fence. Various cars on the infield with bonnets up including Mel Morris uh, not having a happy night with that rather smart car. 332, Vic Jordan still running in third at the moment, but Nigel Hardy has just uh, changed that situation. He bundles Jordan out of the way. So Nigel Hardy now definitely establishing himself in third place as we come into the closing stages. There's the leader, Pete Paulding, Mike Close in second as they come down towards the starter and the chequered flag for tonight's consolation. three home then in the consolation and a win for number 33 there in the CF Booth sponsored car Peter Folding second 199 Mike Close there he is and in third was indeed 317 the blue top Nigel Hardy that's where we take a break we'll be back with you for the rest of tonight's short circuit racing from Coventry with the grand final in just a couple of minutes
part of racing that always gets the adrenaline flowing in the driver's veins, the start, waiting for the grand final, and the man who got himself there by dint of a very good heat win, that new car tonight, 347 Andy Shaw from Chesterfield in Derbyshire. Alongside him in the yellow grade, 244 Mick Rogers. The lower grade drivers featuring quite well in tonight's racing, a lot of the reds having to work very hard and qualify via the consolation this evening at Coventry. It's a World Championship qualifying round, the World Championship, of course, here in September, September the 6th, the 1986 Brisca World Championship. 55, Bert Finnegan from Staffordshire. He's uh, been working hard tonight to qualify that number 55 car from the red grade. The finals, of course, generally when the star men shine. 33, the uh, Peter Folding car that we saw win heat, uh, win the consolation, in fact, taken out of his heat. Alongside him, not having the best of evenings, but still not bad for an olden, number one, Stuart Smith. 2-1-2, two, two, the national points leader at the moment, Frank Wainman from Silsden in Yorkshire. Smiler, they call him, and uh, a very genial sort of character indeed, well liked by all the fans and the drivers. Number two, Willie Harrison, the haulage contractor from Rotherham. He's seen a lot of action over the years and a great deal of it here at the Coventry track. Starter, Brian Beat, getting the cars into order again. Rob Scriven in 117. Waving them on to start them on their way for the rolling lap. 20 laps of the Coventry track tonight for the final. 139, Stuart Smith there. 156, Graham Blundell. 317, Nigel Hardy. 306, Mick Noden from Rugby, Warwickshire. 247, Andy Webb. That's the blue grade cars. A little bit of a gap back to the reds. Certainly a lot of them struggling very hard to qualify for this year's world final. The uh, world, world Championship qualifying points still being decided. Two semi-finals to be run. That's even harder. And the big one, of course, on September the 6th, harder still. 2.03, that looked like the Vauxhall Nova bodied car of uh, Dan Clark, builder of some of the smartest cars in the sport. There's Willie Harrison again. Another, another gentleman who does without the big wings. 199, Mike Close also waiting for the off and Big Bad Bobby Burns in 471. Up at the front, at the pointed end, as it were, in the white grade, 295, that very unlikely looking car that went extremely well earlier on, Paul Allen from Melton Mowbray, with 332, also led for an awful long way in the consolation race, Vic Jordan. They're just two white tops then, and they are about to go under pressure from the big boys in the Formula One stock car final here at Coventry. Nope, the starter doesn't like it. He's going to take him round again. A ragged formation on the rolling lap. And uh, Mr. Beat, quite rightly, enforcing the rule there, getting the cars lined up properly for a start, brings the whole track more or less to a halt. You can see Bobby Burns flashing light on the far side there, on the right-hand side of your screens. Slow down, he says. Slow down. Don't be in too much of a hurry to get out there. That, of course, makes the tension even worse for the drivers when they get an aborted rolling lap like that because you're just ready to put the right boot down and all of a sudden you've got to back off and leave it for another trip round the track before putting the pedal to the metal. 2-1-2, two, two, the great big wing on top of the Frank Wayman car. 85, Ray Tildesley, Bobby Burns, 471, 53, John Lund. Now, he'll be having a good go at Frank Wayman in this one, I shouldn't wonder, because the points championship or the top of the points championship is within his grasp. Coventry International Speedway, it says on the side of there, of course, Coventry, the home of the bees. A long time number one stadium in both speedway and stock car racing. One of the grand stadiums of Great Britain. The track, as ever, in excellent condition here at Coventry. Uh, certainly a lot of circuit proprietors do well to learn from what's done here to keep this track in such good shape and this time we have the green away go the cars it's paul allen who leads them away in 295 vic jordan right behind him then the yellows then the blues 247 andy webb right in the middle of them a little bit of dust as the evening sun sets here at coventry and going just a little bit wide there that uh, looks like finnegan going out bounce the wheels and meet as they come through that corner locked in combat Tapping 412, Dave Tapping, I should say, who uh, 
recent first time final winner that gets him promoted up to red grade for the first time he's been handling it nicely a lot of horsepower a lot of speed that uh, looked very much like john kayser in there we haven't seen much of him tonight a fairly unobtrusive drive from him mike rogers gets swiped onto the infield gets back loses a lot of places though mcnoden goes through once you get knocked off the racing line in any kind of oval racing uh, it's very very difficult to get back in somebody goes over at the far end of the track and willie harrison bites the fence they all come to grief on that fourth turn and the car laying on its side i think they'll probably bring this one to a halt the yellow flags are about to go out the drivers slowing down willie harrison backs off in fact he's protecting that upturn car by the look of things the driver trying to struggle out from there he's waved away by the marshal the car's going around the outside and the driver as per usual in these things, perfectly all right. These cars are built strong. We think that was Les Mitchell went over, and uh, it, we think he'll have to right the car before they can carry on with the race. He's right on the racing line on that bend. So we wait for the track to be cleared, and there's number one, Stuart Smith, making his way off the track. It looks as though he's got a badly bent rear axle, so that's probably the end of his racing for tonight. The starter still waving the yellows as the cars slowly get round, ready for the restart. Quite a lot of distance left in this 20-lap final. And there is Smith. In fact, he's decided to call it a night. He looks pretty disgusted with that, too. So not a happy evening for Stuart Smith as he goes to find a grandstand seat. Green flag, away go the cars again for the remainder of tonight's grand final and world qualifying round. Up at the front still that white top car, 295, Paul Allen going very nicely. Ray Tam uh, Dave Tapping going 412, he called him Ray for some reason, 495, that's the Kayser Mobile right behind him as the leader gets a lot of pressure but doesn't leave much room for that yellow top to get inside. That was Rob Scriven trying to make the attack there, but not getting anywhere on that occasion. Graham Blumble well sideways, Andy Webb likewise. Stu Smith too in 1.39. The joke was when that number was released was that uh, Stu Smith world champion was 3.91 and that Stuart Smith was 1.39 just to confuse matters nicely. 36 Rodney folding well back there in the reds look at the dust just a little bit uh, blowing about there as the sun shines through it 4.33 uh, getting knocked all over the place that time John Thorpe still with 2.95 Paul Allen going very nicely but look at Nigel Hardy he's making a lot of progress and he goes through once again with Mick Noden for company so the battle on between Hardy and Noden for the uh, second half of the grand final at Coventry there's Dave Beresford the high Manchester man Frank Wayman in 212 goes through on the inside. 244. Uh, Mike Rogers is still there with a chance. The lights come on around the Coventry track. Some of the best lighting system in the country, in fact. We have a few problems here at this circuit seeing what we're doing. Another white top still on the run. Vic Jordan, 332. Mike No, Mick No, rather, now gets his nose in front of Nigel Hardy. And uh, 511 coming through Pete Hall. West Yorkshireman uh, dividing the front two at the moment. Mick Noden getting away rather well in 306. Two o three. Dan Clark uh, kicking up a lot of dirt in that car. Now he almost came to grief recently at Crew when he ended up upside down in three foot of mud on the track and looked in very real danger of drowning at one point. But safe and sound. Dan complete with respirator back in the racing here at Coventry under very dry conditions 53 john lund still in there charging but he's almost a lap down on 306 336 uh, rod folding gets spun out along with john thorpe they go for a graceful waltz backwards off onto the infield the photographer looks quite unconcerned nerves of steel these brisk photographers i tell you 203 dan clark that very smart car always one step ahead of everybody else in styling is dan 212 Wayman going nicely very, very big wing on top of there. He knows he doesn't actually achieve a great deal on a one and a half ton stock car on a short oval, but he's going nicely enough there in fourth place. The car spreading themselves out just a little bit now. Speed should be high in this one. In fact, third heat receiving 5.08 seconds, but the fastest time was heat two, 5.05 for uh, 3.47. Andy Shaw, whoops, and the uh, Dan Clark finding some kind of obstruction as he also has other things to cope with like Frank Wayman on the attack. 
Wayman on the attack, not to be tried, but where does Dan Clark wisely decides to move over? Netting, unfortunately, about half a dozen other cars through in the process. There we go, Frankie Wayman, number one in the points at the moment, getting ticked off in the headphones for Frank. better honestly viewers yes we know that but it seems somehow to trip off the tongue frank francis or frankie or smiler call him what you will he used to get a great deal of uh, jostling from his mum at coventry selling magazines at one time i was as you know, that is but a fine family the way and great supporters of stock car racing Nigel Hardy then still on the offensive and he doesn't need to push Nick McNoden out of the way. No, does it all for him. Slides rather out of shape on that bend and Hardy can't believe his luck. He's through and into the lead. Going very nicely. He's had quite a good season and uh, deserves better results than he has been getting. He's in the A grade. Yeah. Blue top sector. He's in Huddersfield in Yorkshire. Good Yorkshire lad. 2.47 Andy Webb. Still that enormous, I rather think that is a grotesque bin plate that, uh, that he has on that car, but he's stuck with that for several seasons now. Boards are coming out into the closing laps. It's Hardy then from Noden. And uh, just a little bit further back there is John Kayser in 495. We haven't seen much of him at all this evening. He's well kept well out of the way of the the aggravation. Another southerner is back Kayser, a farmer from Sapper Walden down in uh, Sutton for Essex. Nigel Hardy, though, the Yorkshireman leads here at Cobb Creek in Midlands. Terrific traveller in risk of Formula One stock cars. Nice, tidy car and a nice, tidy win in fact for Nigel Hardy. Check the flag is out. That does him quite a bit of good in his efforts to qualify for this year's World Championship. He lays down in about 10th place at the moment, so that should get him quite a good position in one of the semi-finals in the next coming month. Let's give you the first six for that then, the grand final, sponsored by Tyre Services Great Britain, 1986 World Championship qualifying round and points accordingly. Andy Webb there just about finishing in the placings this time as the cars roll round on their slowing down lap. But the man who won it this time out, 317, Nigel Hardy. Second was 306, McNoden. Third, 495, John Kayser. Fourth was 212, Frankie Wayman. In fifth, 247, Andy Webb. And in sixth place, 203, after a rather eventful ride, Danny Clark. And a useful result there for Nigel winning some much-needed qualifying points to get him into this year's world final. The presentation then, and the trophy being presented tonight by Tire Services Great Britain, one of the directors uh, of the local branches there, handing over the swag to Nigel Hardy and the bottle of bubbly, and some nice young ladies to help him round on his lap of honour. Tire Services, one of the big uh, dealers in tyres and exhaust systems in this country, with well over 260 outlets, so that puts them in the big league as far as tyre supplying is concerned, but a brand new sponsor to Brisker Stock Car Racing. Thanks once again to the energetic management here at Coventry, the Ockletree family, long time uh, in charge of the operations here. Martin Ockletree, the racing director, father Charles Ockletree, the proprietor at Coventry for many, many years. On to the Grand National race then, and for the uninitiated, the Grand National Championship is an all-season championship, traditionally the last race after the final, in which the final winner starts with a lap handicap. A lot of work to do then for tonight's final winner, Nigel Hardy. For many years, uh, stock car racing has seen pretty much the same format for meetings, that is, heats, consolation, final, and what used to be called the Helter Skelter. Nobody knows quite why it got that name, but that always used to be the last race of the evening and uh, back in the late 50s, early 60s, uh, when this elderly voice started watching stock car racing, you'd get all comers out in that one, and uh, that meant the no-hope as the top men and a very big variety of machinery, sometimes far too many for the size of the track. Well, these days, Brisker quite uh, wisely, with the amount of power that these Formula One cars have on tap, restrict that to 30 cars 
for the uh, Grand National Championship. The first 30 ready, basically, plus the winner of the final who's seeded through and starting at the back. Uh, we've got 33 cars, in actual fact, out in this one, the Coventry track being one of the larger and safer emporiums of speed on the Frisker circuits. And this will be raced over 20 laps. Nigel Hardy then, with his lap handicap just in front of the Whites. 4-1-0 is Paul Lowe, 4.44. What a rotten evening he's had. He's been in the lead, he's been spun out, he's been broken down. Mel Morris and all with a new car too. Green flag down, away they go. Straight up the fence goes a gaggle of yellow tops. The rest try and squeeze away through, take the tyres with them. Bumping, jostling, bouncing and boring. That's what makes Formula 1 stop car racing spec livings. Your aggravation then through the first bend. There's Bobby Burns, a man who's won't cause quite a lot of it to being stuck in. It was Paul Lowe who got taken out along with uh, 52, Craig Holler, Craig from Rochdale in Lancashire, and the other side that's Steve Ferris in 225, local lad. Three of those out of the race, over the fence to safety. 309, Jane Bean getting, coming in some pretty rough treat from the lads this time. Young lady, they'll have to watch out for the dog, which is a particularly uh, fierce little beast on four legs who's prone to savage other people's tyres. Wonderful character. Jane, much the prettier of the duo, though, I may say. Down the straight, lots of dirt and mud flying, far up the terraces. 3.28, getting some very rough treatment from the following, uh, following traffic. Keith Riley, the man who has fell victim to that lot, backs off onto the centre green to safety. 199, Mike Close. The Yorkshire Farmer coming along there very the Yorkshire Farmer actually probably spends as many much time building stock cars as anything else he does build quite a few for other people. That car with some interesting new developments in the rear suspension of this season so in search for traction on these shale tracks. Mel Morris still running this time and with the minimum of difficulties at present, he's nicely up in the first five placings. Looking for the leader though, there's a lot of chaos on that first bend. I see right back down to the uh, down the field at the moment. Still Frankie Wayneman, Dave Meller, he's there as well. He's had another fairly mediocre evening. Plenty of cars going to take to the infield and they're not giving a lot of room. A bit of a naughty there. Mel Morris getting well onto the infield as he has to get out of the way of Graham Blumble. 51, Mo Smith, the car, red and blue, very smart. The cars always look very well under under lights on all these oval meetings. Leader Mel Morris then. Uh, he's in the lead already once tonight. This time he hopes he can stay there, but uh, I think he's going to have his work cut out. There's a very big star entry tonight. Those three parked cars making life awkward exit in that fourth turn. The cars that are getting too far up front. It's Morris who leads. Mel Morris then. Getting a little bit of aggravation. He's from the West Midlands, from uh, Wolverhampton. 248 second place or he was getting uh, pushed aside the whole red top army storms through including peter paulding bobby burns bert finnegan a few bumper going on there as uh, fred skinner refuses to move over steadfastly he's not having any of that so if you want to get past you've got to come the hard way skinner not one of the easiest men in the sport to pass those red tops ganging up on him fred bites a post 53 john lund going in with him I don't think that's meant to happen. I think that Lund was on the wrong line at that time. Or he may have been the man responsible for the big push. And Frankie Wayman going through very hard this time. There's Bobby Burns now. He's making a break to the front with Mike Close right behind him. Close seems to be following everybody today. And it's Burns now who leads. The Flockton plant hire sponsored car has uh, 33 feet balding backs out of the way. He's not going to win this one. It's Burns now. Big bad Bob from down south. Takes the lead here at Coventry with Mike Close from the north. It's a good north versus south confrontation here. Burns, in fact, has won as many races this year as anybody. Yet he is uh, only in third place in the points, shall I say only. Of course, that's a pretty good achievement as Fred Skinner attempts to asphyxiate an entire stadium full of people here at Coventry. John, or the, uh, the ambulance crew, I should say, keeping well out of the way of that as uh, Fiery Fred stokes it up and somebody goes to throw a handful of, handful of sand off the dog track at him. That's Mo Smith getting the treatment now from Frankie Wayman. 
Frankie stops all over him as they go around that turn. Uh, he wants to keep Mike close in his sights, but close isn't having any. He keeps the foot hard down. He's still in pursuit of the leader. Where is the leader? He seems to have gotten well away this time. Frank Wayneman in second, uh, in third place rather, trying to take second from uh, the 199 car, 511, the uh, Peter Hall car buried in the fence. Looks like the leader with us this time, and quite a gap back to the second place man. Bobby Burns who leads. Mike Close in second, Frank Wayman, 2-1, or Frankie Wayman, 2-1-2, two, two. there's Burns, 471. Ilford in Essex is where he calls home. Uh, and as I said earlier on, some pretty remarkable results in as much as he leads the track championship at Acliff, uh, way up in the northeast. Admittedly, not too many meetings so far at Acliff in the 1986 season. A lot of dirt flying up in the air there. Somebody else gets rather too close to the cushion on the outside of the track. We get who did just that very early on and uh, bit the post as a consequence. 499 still in the running and uh, we thought that was him upside down earlier on, Les Mitchell, but it looks as if it was. He did some grand work on the car. I don't think he can have been. There's Dave Tapping going through rather sedately. Three laps to go. It burns, 471 and close putting on the pressure, a great bit he's got to because he's got Frankie Wayman breathing down his neck as well, so Bobby Burns coming under pressure this time, that won't worry him a great deal, he's not a character to be trifled with. Across the line in the closing stand, do oh dear, somebody overdoes it there, bites the post, that, I think that was Mike Close in fact, losing his second place to Frankie Wayman, a bit of a misjudgment there, very rare for Mike Close, Burns coming round that corner, a little bit of smoke off the tyre. I think it's the last lap coming up now, so Burns keeping his eye open for Wayneman, but Wayneman, unless he can find quite a bit more horsepower from that big V8 engine under the bonnet, is going to have to settle for second place this time out. His competition hotting up at the top of the points chart as we get into mid-season with the Bristol Formula Ones. And it's the chequered flag indeed for the Southerner. Bobby Burns, 471, takes tonight's Grand National Championship race here at Compton. So just to give you the first three again in that Grand National race, in a time of 6 minutes 36 seconds, a very respectable pace for the Coventry Raceway, 471, Bobby Burns, Milford in Essex was the winner. The second from Silsden in Yorkshire, 212, Frankie Wayneman. In third place, another Yorkshireman, 199, Mike Close. Well, that brings to conclusion a very exciting evening's Formula One stock car viewing. Uh, they certainly live up to their reputation as the best in the business when it comes to short circuit racing. We'll be seeing lots more Formula One during the coming months here on Screen Sport. We hope you've enjoyed this week's presentation of short circuit racing. So for me, Paul...